Perhaps you've heard of the Forbidden City. That was the great capital that Emperor Zhu Di built for himself that had no equal in its time. Shortly after the city's dedication, attended by dignitaries from Asia and Africa, Zhu Di launched a massive fleet of treasure ships to explore the world, find new trading partners, and expand the empire's system of tribute. Author Gavin Menzies reports the fleet set sail on March 8, 1421. Menzies is uniquely qualified to write this book. As a former submarine commander in the UK's Royal Navy, he knows ocean and wind currents throughout the world. On the other hand, Menzies is not a professional historian, allowing him to think outside the box. The treasure ships were huge with 40-foot rudders. Each of these vessels was built from 300 acres of teak. With square sails, they were mostly driven by the prevailing winds and currents. This is what enabled Menzies to reconstruct their probable routes. Then he tested his well-educated guesses by locating Chinese pottery, structures, and plants at suspected landfalls. I'll mention more evidence in a moment, but first, let's deal with an important question. How is it that the first European explorers carried maps of their destinations on their voyages? I'm talking about charts such as the Piri Reis and others. Menzies indicates the map's extreme accuracy stemmed from information gathered by cartographers aboard the treasure fleets. Now here's the additional evidence. Wrecks of junks along the routes Menzies has reconstructed, native artwork depicting Chinese figures, and the testimony of European explorers, including Columbus. And are you ready for this one? DNA evidence links selected Native American tribes along the route with Chinese people groups. The obvious question is, why haven't we heard this before? It turns out history was changed by a stroke of lightning. All Chinese progress stopped when the Forbidden City was struck during a thunderstorm shortly after the fleet left. Emperor Zhu Di's palace burned. There were a lot of deaths. And the Mandarins, who were already displeased with the emperor's lavish spending, pretty much cut off contact with the outside world. Expecting a hero's welcome, the returning voyagers received the opposite reaction. Treasure ships were left to rot, and records of the journeys were destroyed. The later Europeans, on the other hand, bragged about their exploits, and that's what made it into the history books. I recommend 1421, the year China discovered America. Gavin Menzies did not settle for the status quo. He dug deeply to discover the true story. History class was never so exciting. This is Steve Eastman reporting. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.